And we want to welcome to Ron Siegel Radio, your guiding star in the complex universe of home ownership and financial planning. In today's special episode, we're thrilled to have Sarah Perkins, a revered credit education specialist from Blue Water Credit with an impressive track record of over 20 years. Sarah brings a wealth of knowledge in credit restoration and debt resolution. Today, we're going to zero in on what it takes to purchase and finance your dream home, manage outstanding debts efficiently, and lay the groundwork for a prosperous retirement. Get ready for an insightful journey into achieving personal financial security and becoming an extremely uh, uh, an ex exemplary community citizen. Stay tuned and don't forget to su subscribe for more wisdom and making informed financial decisions. Let's talk to Sarah Perkins. Welcome. Hello. Good to see you again, Ron. You too. So uh, what's going on in the world of credit? Anything new? Is, is there any new laws or things like that that we need to know about? Or are we still going to we're still working on, on trying to understand these things from where we've been. Yeah, I would say the only thing new out there is um, the implementation of using FICO 10T and Advantage score probably coming around the corner. It's been something that's been talked about for the last year or two, some two, two different scoring models, but hasn't gone into effect yet. So we're going to kind of stick with the basics of what we kind of talked about before and improving your score and how, how to understand it as it is right now. So explain that just a little bit, what you just said, though, using FICO 10T, is that what you said? Yeah, so because primarily right now for mortgages, they use a scoring model that's FICO 5, 4, and 2. Um, and then there's another model out there called the Vantage Score, but 90% of lending decisions are still FICO, but they're trying to make it more fair out there, so they want to come up with some they have two new models. They're looking at the 10T and the Vantage 4.0. That's looking a lot more trending data. But there's been some um, questions about if it's fair or not, what it's looking at. So it's been on the back burner. But from what I understand, in the next year or so, they're going to be rolling out some new models that we're going to have to figure out how to understand. <laughs> That's interesting. But, but haven't they been saying that they're going to roll out these new models for many, many years now? Yeah, I would say primarily these two, it's been a talk for about two years now, but I know something came out about a month ago that, you know, they've had the discussions, they've let people voice their opinions, but from what I understand, it, it's coming around the corner. Okay, and so, you know, right now, I think you've shared with us in the past that there's a lot of different FICO models, right? I mean, we've got credit card and auto and mortgage, and I don't even know what else. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I think within FICO itself, there's probably like 20 plus different versions. So like you said, there's a general version. There's one used for credit cards. There's one used for auto and one for mortgages. So they all are looking primarily at the same thing, but you know, they, they do have some variances because it's obviously a lot more risky to purchase a home than a car or, you know, a car is more riskier than a credit card. So you know, mortgage, they're going to look at a lot more history. Um, they are going to not, they're, they're counting paid collections where some versions, if you have a paid collections, it like it doesn't exist anymore. So there are some little differences that can cause a variance sometimes of 50 points. So you might think you're looking at the right version and then you go have the lender pull it and it be 50 points off and you're trying to understand why. That's a big issue because I've been running into that lately where people have, uh, not called Sarah Perkins to take care of their credit issues. They're trying to do it on themselves. And, you know, you can try and do it yourself, but I could try and do knee surgery myself because I need it and it might not work out real well. The bottom line here, though, is you might be looking at the wrong item, right? Am I, isn't that it? Yeah. So you might you might be looking at the different version than what your lender is using. And most of the time, you're only going to see that mortgage score through your lender or if you go and purchase it from like a site like myfico.com. Most credit monitoring systems are probably just going to give you your general FICO score, or they might even give you a Vantage score, which isn't really used at all. And that can really throw you off and have you focus on the wrong things to fix. So I don't want to get too specific, but I want to throw this at you. I had somebody just this last week send me a, a, a screenshot that came from one of their credit card companies, and it said FICO. It was from Experian, mm -hmm. and it said FICO model eight. Mm -hmm. And I looked at our, from on our lending team and we're looking at FICO model two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the FICO eight is the same data. 
No. So FICO-8 is just your general scoring model. And it's one of those models that doesn't penalize you for like a paid collection. So you might see a higher score if you have paid off collections where the mortgage score still is penalizing you for those paid collections on your credit report. So that can be a huge thing right there that causes a big difference between the version you're looking at and the version they're looking at. And what about time? Do they do they all come off or, or have the same impact over the same amounts of time or are they different there? So as far as how long it can affect your score, you have seven years that something can be reported on your credit, but different versions may only go back and look at the last two years of data or maybe the last four years of data. Mortgage is probably going to really be the one that looks at the whole last seven years. Um, where FICO 8 might be primarily looking at what you've done in the last two years. So even though that blemish is still there, they're not really looking at it, you know, like with a magnifying glass, like they would on your mortgage version. That's fascinating because if I understand it correctly, this 10T is supposed to be more of a trending mm -hmm. and you know, something that might have happened uh, six, seven years ago may not really be indicative of what someone's trend is today. Correct. And on the other side of that is if you just pay down your credit card um, to a zero balance, but for the last two years, you've kept a high utilization, they're going to look at the behavior in, as a whole in the last two years. Right now, if you pay it off, you're going to get that jump in points right away where the trending may look at the behavior of what you've normally done over the last two years. So if you've carried high balances primarily for two years, just paying it down isn't going to give you possibly the boost that it gives you right now. Ah, oh, so they're taking away some of our tricks. I know, I know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll have to learn a whole new set of tricks, I guess. So explain this one maybe, because I saw on one of the, the we ran a report for somebody, and it came back saying that they had one of their trade lines had, I think it was like $3,000 was their credit limit. They owed $2,900 and something. And it said, pay it down to $10, but don't pay it off. Yeah, I mean, the idea behind that is you want it between zero and 10%. Um, keeping a balance keeps activity on the card because FICO, if you do not have recent activity, they are no longer going to count that trade line. So by carrying a small balance like the $10, you're still keeping that account active where they can use it in their scoring model. Gotcha. We're going to continue our conversation with Sarah Perkins, Blue Water Credit. When we come back, and, and we're going to bring Sarah Sarah Perkins in with us. Sarah, it used to be that I laughed when I heard the the things, especially on 60 Minutes, where they said that 20% of the, of the credit reports have errors. And I said that I've been looking at credit reports for decades, and I still have not seen one that did not have errors. Now, you look at more than I do. Have you ever seen one that did not have errors? No, I, I think I think that statistic is pretty low. I think most people have some form of an error on their credit report on one of the bureaus out there. So whether it's impacting their score or not is a different question, but there's plenty of errors to be found on credit reports. Yeah, I've said that the highest I've seen is an 834, and it had, I, as a layman, I could identify a half a dozen errors at least on that report. So... Anytime anybody thinks that they don't have errors on their report, you know, I think you're mistaken. So when we go and start doing some work on credit, sir, is it a quick process? Slow I hear people say, well, we can get your score up in, in two weeks. Is that a fallacy, a pipe dream, or are there legitimately strategies for that? I mean, there are some circumstances where we can get quick fixes done and provide deletion letters that allow you guys as lenders to do rapid rescores. But really, the process, you have to give it at least a minimum of 30 to 45 days. And that's just because, you know, most of the reporting that creditors are doing to the bureaus happen only once a month. So there's no way to speed up that process. They are usually you have a set date for your credit card account to report any changes. And then you have to give the bureaus then time to then report any changes as well. So um, there's unfortunately not a way to speed up the process, but we do have some tools out there that can help lenders do a rescore and, and maybe get some faster results. So you have to be patient with the process. Yeah, I hear people sometimes will say, well, my score is up 10 points now. When can I get the other 10? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's it's pretty much, we don't control those things, do we? I mean, it's, it's, the, it's the, the reporting uh, institutions 
Correct. And it, and you know, sometimes it can feel super fast because maybe you made the change, you know, a couple of days before the reporting went over to the bureaus, but then next time you make the change and you still have to wait the 30 days for them to make the next update to the bureau. So again, it's a timing situation because they, like I said, are only reporting once a month. It's usually right after your statement comes out. So you can kind of guesstimate when they're making the reports to the bureaus and kind of time your changes around that. Now, I've in, in looking at a lot of the reports that I've seen, uh, I've frequently and I and I I don't I use myfico.com to monitor my wife and my credit, and I'll be honest, I manipulate mine just because I want to see, you know, if I if I don't make a big payment or if I let my utilization go up or down, I want to see what kind of of uh, uh, changes it has. So having no life, I'm probably looking at my score. <laughs> you know, two or three times a day sometimes because I'll get notifications. Um, is it still an issue where if that the the statement, that they basically report right after the statement closing date? Yeah, so that's one thing people don't understand, especially those that maybe charge up their card for business and then pay it off each month. And they're wondering why their utilization stays high and why there's a balance always reported on their credit report where the normal person gets their statement and then we'll pay the card by the due date. But by that time, it's already been reported to the bureaus. And then you start the whole process over again of using the credit card and then paying it after the statement comes out. So, you know, one little manipulation you can do if you're trying to play the, the credit score game is know when that statement comes out, make the payment maybe a week prior, or maybe make multiple payments throughout the month. So by the time the statement comes out, the balance is a lot lower than what it normally would be. I mean, you don't always have to do this, but if you are looking for a quick so-called bump in your score, that is one way to kind of manipulate the system. That's an in interesting that you, you, you said that, sir, because obviously I've, I've done a, I did a, a segment on that. And anybody that wants to see it can go and see rsrccpayment.com, rsrcc payment, like credit card, ccpayment.com. And I just say, you know, why don't you get in the habit? I mean, a lot of what we do financially is habits, good habits or bad habits. Is there a problem if I have a habit of doing that all the time and going and making those two payments? No, I mean, and you'll probably end up paying less in interest as well, too. So there's... There's nothing wrong with making multiple payments or paying it early. Um, and then you'll always have the benefit of having hopefully a higher credit score because you're keeping that utilization down. And the fun part is, is ironically enough, people that have bad credit never talk about it. And people that have good credit, it's like a they want to put get a, uh, a T-shirt made with their FICO score on there. Yep, that's exactly my dad's one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, so. Can you can you, do you have a big impact if you have a, like a hiccup? You know, if I make one late payment and I've got a, a history of real good payments, is yeah. that gonna have a major impact? Yeah, I like to tell people that the higher your score is, the bigger fall you're going to experience when you do have one of those hiccups. So, um, at some point, if you have multiple late payments, it doesn't have the same impact as that first one. Um, which is why it's so important to make sure you're staying on top of your payment history. One of the biggest problems I see people make is not checking auto pay or not checking an annual fee that's been charged. And next thing you know, they're not paying a bill that they thought they were paying. And uh, then they are have stuck with that blemish and it will drop your score 100 points overnight. Wow. Okay. So that annual fee could could be the, the tripping block. I want to talk more about that when we come back. Continue our conversation. Sarah Perkins is with us. Blue Water Credit, if you want to reach Sarah, go to rsrlinks.com forward slash BWC. rsrlinks.com forward slash BWC goes right to the Blue Water Credit website. And you can get a consultation there. They've been helping our listeners for years and years. We started doing this in 2010. So I'm getting a lot of help from our friends over at Blue Water Credit for our listeners. You ought to take advantage of it. And yes, I, I'm the first to admit you can do it on your own. Wrong. But you can do it. I mean, I can, I, I, and I see a couple across my feed because we do talk about credit so often. So on my social media feeds, I get some of these artificial intelligence things that say, just plug in your credit report, which you can get that, cleanall3.com, plug that in. And they'll do the rest for you. They'll print out the letters and all this stuff. But Sarah, what happens if I dispute a bad item? 
Well, you could be disputing first the wrong item. Um, I've seen people where they go and dispute inquiries in hopes to gain a couple points by getting that inquiry removed, but they dispute inquiry for a credit card they have active on their credit report. And next thing you know, yeah, you got that inquiry off, but you also had that good line of credit that got taken off because you claimed that the inquiry was fraud. So there's a lot of you know, methods on how to dispute accounts properly, you know, what kind of statute you want to state. You don't want to just throw like fraud out on everything because most of the time it's going to come back and that account's going to stay. There's a lot of laws out there that are legitimate that you can use to um, navigate through this process. Is that right? Correct. And that's what at Blue Water Credit, our case managers are very well versed on all the different fair credit reporting laws that are out there. That's how they determine how to write the letters. It's very personalized. It's not just a templated system like an AI person might give you or that you might purchase off of a website. I, I'm From what I've heard, the a lot of the, the bureaus, you know, they, they scan in the, the letters that they get. And if it's a template, They've probably seen it before. Yeah, it's you're you're they're not gonna even pay attention to those. And I'll tell people too that after about five or six tries of sending in letters on your own, they are definitely not even looking, giving you a second glance at whatever dispute that you're raising. So then you kind of used up all your chances. And then when you come to us, where we probably could have developed, you know, one letter that was personalized for that specific account and gotten it off for you, you've kind of used all your chances up. So you've uh, you've emptied the revolver and now you're trying to <laughs> find out how to how to fix it and, and bring in a professional yeah. who's you know can't can't get with their their hands tied. Yeah. So let's talk about the we were, before the break we were talking about the annual fees and if I've got a card that has a annual fee, should I just be getting rid of that card and look for one that has no annual fee as my score gets better? Well, it, you know, part of a credit score is the length of the time that you've had your credit cards open. So if it's a card you've had open for a long time, you may just want to stick with paying that $59 annual fee because it's really helping balance off any new credit that you might open. Ideally, FICO wants to see your oldest card be 20 years old and the average length that all of your cards have been open six years. So anytime you shut something down that's over that six years, you're in essence going to lower that average length that the card has been open. So you just need to make sure that you're remembering that that annual fee comes each year, maybe set it up on auto pay. But even with the auto pay, I tell people you need to go in and check that regularly. Maybe you're someone that puts it down for $100 a month. You want to pay more than the minimum. And then you run the card up and you don't realize now your minimum payment's gone up to 105 You see the debit coming out each month. You think you're paying that credit card bill. But in essence, you're missing $5 every month and then causing yourself to go 30 day late. 60 day late. And if you're not getting any alerts, then you can have your card charged off for just missing a $5 payment. Wow. So just another reason to get into that habit that we share on our video, rsrccpayment.com. Go in every month and, and, and let, you know, I, I keep a, again, I have no life. So I have a spreadsheet that has our credit cards and it has the closing date for every card that we have. So you know, like every Wednesday I go in and I look at the sheet and I say, okay, which cards are, are coming up next week? And I look at the balances, pay as much as I want. And then I've got the auto pay set for, you know, $50 every t- every um, payment due date for like three or four days before the payment due date. So I know that I'm, I'm watching those balances. Also helps, and, and I don't know, do you do a, a identity theft at Blue Water Credit? Uh, yeah, so we do identity theft cases. Is that what you're referring to? Like right. if you have somebody yet. So we are lucky enough to be partnered with some great attorneys that have even got cash compensation back for victims of identity theft. So we will help them uh, write the letters to the bureaus, um, you know, have the theft affidavit notarized and sent in. And if they don't remove them after 30 days, our attorneys step in and have been super successful in getting those removed. And like I said, money back into our client's pocket at no additional costs. Nice. And, and this, you know, if you're going and you've got that habit of checking your cards, it doesn't take more than 10 minutes once a week. You, you get that habit, you're going to find out if somebody's hacked one of your cards real quick and get that information over. Give us an idea, Sarah, you know, because I know that 
Um, one of the big bourbon uh, companies, um, I don't ever use their name, but they, uh, they got in trouble and their, their deal was is that they had a monthly fee and they didn't really attack the entire credit report because they wanted to keep on grinding those monthly fees. Is that an industry standard or, or how does Blue Water Credit work? So we are a monthly fee, but we have to provide a service um, to be able to charge that monthly fee. So we always bill in arrears. We are always attacking all three bureaus, all accounts that we can at one time. So our goal is to get people out within four to six months. And like I mentioned, after six disputes, if the bureaus haven't changed anything, most likely they're not going to change anything in the future. So if you are with a company longer than six months and they're still trying to work on those same things, they're probably not doing you any kind of good service. The only time someone should go past six months is unfortunately if they have new stuff that pops up. But no, we're all about going in and attacking every single item as quickly as possible and getting you out of our program and into hopefully home ownership, you know, as soon as possible. Talk about the idea of where we need to be, because I think in the past I've had some clients that have they've had that um that that uh banner mentality that they want to have the ultra high score <clears throat> and i've had some of the folks at blue water have said hey you know some we've we've achieved our goal why do you want to keep fighting over this and spending money when you don't need to talk about that a little sarah yeah so you know, I, as a lender, you could probably attest to this at a certain score, you're not going to get any more benefits as far as a lower interest rate or, um, you know, better closing costs. So we're about getting you back to your lender, getting you in that loan. And then if you want to work on getting it improved for a refinance down the line, great. So again, our goal is communication with your lending team, finding out what the minimum requirements are spend the least amount of money with us to get you to your goal. And then obviously, if you want to come back and just get that score up for general cleanup purposes, or like I said, to refinance down the line, hopefully when rates come back down, you're in a lot better position. And that goes into one of our other, other videos that we have out there, rsr2step.com, rsr2step.com. So you can get with Sarah Perkins and our friends at Blue Water Credit and get to a bankable number. May not be the best number, but it'll be bankable. Go and do the cash out refi, the debt consolidation loan, and that's going to have a fee built into it for cash out. It's just the way the loan level price adjustments work that come out of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. But then you stay in the program with our friends at Blue Water Credit, get the scores in, improved because you've now paid off a lot of your debts. And when rates come down, as we forecast they will, you can refinance and get into a new loan. You'll save the money that you already built in, in the cash out cost. And you're going to save the money because of Blue Water getting you a better credit score. Is there, is there any problem with staying in the program? Do you, have you come across any problems? Does it, do they note it on your credit report in any way that you're, you're disputing things? Um, well, if we are actively disputing items, um, they will not go and in factoring into your score. So when you go back to your lender, we do have to make sure that we are removing those disputes. Um, but if you're just working on your credit, there's no harm or foul to have those accounts in a dispute status while you're with us. It's just when you go to make that final poll in re um, doing the new credit report that the lender has to do to make sure everything is out of dispute status at that time. And we walk our clients um, you know, step by step on how to do that. Appreciate all your sharing of all your knowledge, Sarah. I know there's a lot more that we could talk about. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time or we're out of time. But if you want more information on getting your credit cleaned up legally, not the fraudulent ways that some places are recommending, legally, accurately, efficiently. And I've seen over many years that they do the job, a really good job for the people that we send there. Go to Blue Water Credit, rsrlinks.com slash BWC, rsrlinks.com slash BWC. Talk to Sarah and her team at Blue Water Credit.